Hello, my name is Bob Brown, and it's my privilege to host this show, which is based on the reality that Westboro is a great town filled with interesting people. Many of them are long-term residents who have so many memories and stories about life in Westboro in days gone past. And so your local cable station, Westboro TV, has initiated this series of programs which are designed to reflect upon life in earlier days and to possibly make suggestions about how we can improve life in this fine town for the future. All right, today I want to introduce several folks to you. You've met Polly at one bef once before in another tape that we did. And we have Earl Story and Frank Desiata, and I'm Bob Brown. And the reason we're gathered here today is I think these two guys offer this town a perfect model for the way agencies in this town can cooperate together. They both have individual duties and they work for different agencies in the town, but they do so well together that this town really benefits from what they do. Polly knows both of them very well. Yep. Um, she's worked with the DPW for a while. Um, as a volunteer. As a volunteer. And I, these fellows have been in this town for a long time. There's an old Mainer who was asked one day how long he had lived in a particular spot. And he, the fellow says to him, you lived here all your life? And the old Mainer says, not yet. <laughs> well, these guys, I think, are in that stage here in Westboro. I think both of you are from Westboro, yeah, pretty correct? Yeah, Earl, absolutely. would you tell us just a little bit about your family and, and how long you've been in town? Well, I was, I was born here in Westboro. Uh, my father, uh, owned a construction company here and he was a longtime resident here and my grandfather but they originally from uh, up in Aroostook County up in Washburn Maine I believe my father was born there but he they came down here very very early they were uh, young there was my father Earl my aunt Edna who was Edna Beeman was the <laughs> district nurse mm -hmm. and my uncle Irving story and uh, they came down very very early and uh, in their life they were just kids and uh, I've lived here all my life and raised four children and went through the Westboro school system. One went through uh, Assabet Valley, um, graduated in class of 66 with Frank. Um, Good. Owned, owned a couple of businesses and been working for the town for the past going on 11 years uh, next month. Great. So, uh, does Washburn sound familiar to you, Polly? It's right next door that's right. to where I came from. Polly's from Ashland. Well, yeah. Mars Hill, I guess that's where they came from. They no, I, well, I think they came from Washburn, Washburn. because there's a lot of... My grandfather was a minister there. Was he really? Yeah. 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 Frankie, how about you? Long roots in Westboro as well. My, my dad actually was born like I was in Framingham, but lived here all our lives. Uh, so he went. To, my dad went to high school here. Um, graduated from Westboro High School. My mom was originally from Quincy but went to school in Worcester. Um, they got married just before my dad went into the service in the uh, mid 40s. Um, he came back from the service thankfully and uh, we our family grew up here in Westboro so we've all lived here. I have uh, uh, two sisters and one brother who's, who's passed away mm. um, but we all Kind of stayed in Westboro for a long time. I, I got this job, uh, went to Westboro High School, graduated from UMass after that, and got the job as a recreation director part time back in 78. The job went full time in 1980. So I've got 32 years in here. Uh, it's been the job for me, the job of a lifetime. I love, absolutely love what I'm doing. I love the work that I'm doing. Uh, I love the fact that now I've got someone in place. Again, nothing. Uh, wrong with how the system worked before but since Earl's been here it's just been a different system uh, you know he just uh, gets the work done he treats the fields like it was his own front and back lawn uh, in town uh, he knows about kids he knows about sports so it really takes that kind of combination of someone to really uh, put into the fields what, what they are. And the, the fields in the last 10 years in Westboro have from everyone that I speak to uh, out there who plays in a lot of other communities tell us that they're some of the best fields, if not the best fields in central Massachusetts. And I, I got to attribute that to, to Earl, uh, you know, for what he's done with it. And as I said, for, for both of us, it's been a great thing to work together. 
as, as he mentioned, we, we graduated together in 1966 yeah, from West Ball High School. So we obviously have known each other for a long time. And uh, it, it goes on. It's, it still goes on. That's and, great. Uh, I, I love working with him and love working with the recreation department. Well, I think that's the, that's the message we want to give, that not only do you have individual tasks and you have different titles, but the, your ability and your willingness to work so closely together makes this a, a, a real marvelous kind of situation, and everybody benefits. Absolutely. I agree with Absolutely. you in terms of the fields. The fields are magnificent. I remember when I was helping coach the football team with kicking uh, up the old high school. That, that field was a, a well, mess. Yeah. The fields are, are, but I have the tools to do it. The taxpayer provides a, you know, the, the, the money to in my in our budget, which is and and we've been able to stay within those means for um, many years, haven't had to be, go up on our budget because we've um, done other things to cut the cost down, you know, sort of stay there and keep it because it is a big expense. The athletic fields, you know, and people drive by and see them sitting there all day long. But drive by at night and you can't get in the pack a lot, you know. Right. I mean, kids are in school and they can't play on them during the day, unfortunately, yeah. you know. But it's uh, it definitely been a labor of love yeah. for me. I mean, I, I love the job. It's fun and working with Frank is just, yeah. we think alike on a lot of things and we like to do things right. We like to do it once and do it <laughs> the correct way so we're not back at it again, you know. And uh, it's... Uh, well, you can talk about praising the town for giving the taxpayer the money that you need, but I know from personally watching you guys that there's an awful lot that's done out of your own creativity and really pooling energies together and finding other ways to get things done. I think specifically now of the soccer fields that you built over at the state hospital along the round side of Lake Chauncey. Now, that was that saved the town an immense amount oh. of money for the way you guys did it all yourselves. Yeah. Well, I, I've got to thank John Arnold. Well, that's right. John, John worked close. John was doing a lot of work uh, for Frank before I uh, came here, helping out part time and doing, coming in and running, renting equipment and borrowing. Jim Harvey was helpful in yeah. the town. He used the town's equipment, and but uh, John and I, and working with John, like. You know, Bob. I mean, he's yeah. he's just uh, so much fun to work yes, with. He he's is. a great guy and very knowledgeable. And uh, he uh, he uh, was between the two of us. We designed that field. We 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 didn't have any plans. We did it by the seat of our pants. We knew what we wanted. We've both been in construction for many years, and uh, we knew what to do. And uh, yeah, we we did save the town a you lot sure of did. money. But it was. Uh, it was a labor of love. It was a beautiful spot to work at over there at the lake, and it was just, it was gorgeous. Great job. Yeah, it was, it was Now, while, you're talk while we're talking about that, you're now on the committee for, with the state hospital to d help decide what's going to happen to the land. Um, can you give us any assurance about those fields? Is there... Not really. Um, nothing has been said at all about whether the town's going to get the fields or not. There's been uh, rumors that, you know, the state would... It would probably give the state a black eye if they didn't do it, but I, I, I don't know. I, uh, uh, we had our first meeting um, uh, the other night up the DPW, and there was a tremendous amount of people there. And um, they just told us how the, uh, how the whole thing would go, you know. Um, it'll probably be a year, they said, before they go to leg the legislature with their recommendation on what, uh, what will happen and uh, I'm talking what Dave Perini said and he is the uh, commissioner for uh, DCAM okay. and uh, he ran the meeting and uh, uh, DYS is going to stay there right. they they got a foothold there and you know they're going to stay there so there's quite an area that they're going to control the the, sh the old shop building right. and and that that area loop. yeah but the rest of the property uh, and, and of course there's so much uh, so much concern or interest about the historical. Now the historians were here from the commission was here from Boston, from the historical uh, commission, and uh, uh, they're uh, you know they're going to evaluate all that property because like you know yourself, Bob, that that administrative building is uh, very the historic. The original reformatory. Yeah, uh -huh. and uh, so there's going to be a lot of probably. Uh, Walk arounds and looking at the property and uh, different things, but uh, for the most part, I, I kind of feel that 
the town should probably end up with everything that abuts the lake. Yeah. You know, and and uh, and hopefully it would be designated conservation slash recreation. So, I mean, you don't really right, need to build Could I just ask you a favor as you move on with the committee? Would you keep in mind that you shouldn't have to fight this thing alone? If, if, if there's anything that we can do, I think we ought to have a citizen's uprising that simply says to the state, we want that land. Well, they're going to do, they've already said they're going to do, either have public hearings or set up a website for that and everything for the, that's very concerned about what the town of Westboro's uh, population has for uh, input for that yeah. whole thing. So they, they're talking about doing that. Okay. The next I... meeting is probably going to be after Labor Day. They've got a uh, uh, committee that's going to uh, uh, come in and evaluate the property and see what's the best use for it and stuff like that. Yeah. But. You know, you're not going to put luxury condos up there when you got a DYS with razor wire all wrapped around <laughs> across the driveway. You know, but bless those kids. That's right. It's a, uh, it's a gorgeous spot. Yes, it is. And the, the thing that it mean, means so much to me is that you have somehow kept ahead of the population growth with the with the number of fields that you've maintained, so that there seems to be, although they're crowded, there's pretty good access for the town to be yeah. able to use fields. Yeah. That could change a whole dramatically if you start putting huge housing units in and you start build, increasing the population. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be important that we hold on to these facilities that we've got now and increase them wherever we can. So, Yeah, that, that would hurt us dramatically to yeah. lose, that, lose that area. And as you said, town isn't going to get any smaller. It's, it's only going one way. That's right. So for us, it, it is a major concern. And I, I mean, I'm not on the committee. I concur with her, although I, I, I think... They will, they will accept a lot of input from the town of Westboro, but I certainly don't think it hurts for people who are in a position uh, to come to some of mm. those meetings and Absolutely. sit there and let them know that the town of Westboro is, is really interested in, in what the outcome of this is for all the town of Westboro has done for the state uh, yeah. over the years. Yeah. So How many fields do you have? Do you know? <laughs> that, that, that it's a really difficult uh, question and answer because, uh, and I'm going to use the Rogers fields as an example. You might say that we have three soccer fields down there, or you might say we have three baseball fields down there, depending on the season. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Many of our fields, and most of our fields, uh, double as lacrosse, field hockey, soccer, baseball, softball. So they're multi purpose fields. We've got a few, few fields mm -hmm. that are dedicated to a certain spot, yeah. Yeah. sport. But the uh, majority of them are sort of multi-purpose fields. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot of fields in town. We certainly could use more. I know people have been hearing that for a lot of years. But as you said, we, I think we're managing them pretty well right now. The groups in town have been great with us. They sit with Earl and I uh, every spring. We sit down and we sort of have our major meeting, although we talk with them in the fall as well. We sort of have our major meeting when they all come in and, and discuss field use, how everything's going. Uh, how their groups are doing, have they increased, have they decreased in numbers, teams expanded in any ways by adding younger kids. So we've stayed on top of it with that, but I would tell you that all of those volunteer groups have done a wonderful job yeah. in cooperating with us right. and making sure that those fields are in great shape. Too. You've got another field at the state hospital, though, don't you? Other than the ones by Lake Chauncey, the ones in behind the old Hadley. TV building? Yeah, the Hadley. Oh, yeah, the Hadley building. Hadley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that is the town. That's not the state. It is. That's our That is the town now. Yes. Yeah. And that's all deeded Haskell to us. Haskell Fielder now. Yeah. They were yeah. deeded to us. That property is But out. again, Earl right. built that Hadley yeah. Field. He and John that. built yeah. that Hadley Field. I remember. Yeah. And did, yeah. again, saved, saved the town a tremendous amount of money yeah. by doing it that way yeah. and not having to go out and get these major plans drawn up and, and everything. We sat down with all the commissions as we were supposed to and did all that work, and, and Earl would do most of it with, with John. And so we were able to get through all those meetings and get all that done yeah. for a fraction of what it really would have cost if we had to go out to bid and Absolutely. you know pay for those fields to have a private builder build them. Yeah. I'll tell you a little funny story about the Hadley Field. When I came to work here, um, uh, it was in July, so let's, we went on and we did a couple of projects. I helped John... Uh, finished the field down there at uh, Hennessy's field. He was working on that. And so the winter came, the fall came. I think to myself, what am I going to do? I'm, you know, John Walden's my boss. He told you know, I'm going to plow snow and stuff. That's fine. That's good. Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm going, going, going. I want to go, you know. So I said to Frank, I said, uh, 
what's going to go on with that Hadley field that you're going to build? He says, oh, I got the, I got a plans and a thing. They're all drawn up by a design company and everything. And he says, but it's got to go and get approved, you know? I said, well, <laughs> I said, and they was, had a price tag on and getting it approved. And I said, well, why don't you give me that thing and let me see how it works. So I, I went over to Joe Enman right off the bat and I said, Joe, I, I need your help. I said, I want to build these athletic fields for the kids, but I said, I'm, I don't have a clue. Which, which, what do I need to do? Help me out. So Joe's a long, lifelong friend, and he said, well, first of all, you're going to have to go to conservation, he said, but good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I said, because we did a butt wetland, right. and, there was, oh, yeah. and, I, and I said, well, if I get through conservation, if you get through conservation and you come see me, I'll help you get through the rest of it. But he said, good luck. And, you know, conservation couldn't have been more understanding. I went to them and I said, I need your help. So feels for the town and help me out. Tell me what I need to do. And, you know, we started from there and got through all the boards and everything. And, and I think it cost us like $300 and we had a price tag on it, like $15,000 right. to get it done. Yeah. But, you know, that was my time. I was already on the clock, so I could go and do that and get it done during the day. I didn't have to go to meetings at night. Went around to everybody. So it was kind of funny, but Joe was funny. He yeah. said, well, good luck, he said. But I was in the Hadley building with, with a training team during that period of time when you were building that, so we'd check you out the window. And see, see, see. Yeah, the process see. is a little longer when you don't have, you know, the professionals sort of to walk you through it. So the process may, yeah. may take a little longer, yeah. but the money you save, oh, absolutely. It, oh, yeah. it just is, is incredible. And absolutely. nothing against the people that are charging. They've yeah. got to get paid sure. for their time. That's yeah. what they're in for, sure. Sure. you know. Sure. I didn't have anything, but I just said, gee, I'm, I'm going to be bored to tears here. I, I need to do something, you know. So it got me going, and then I rented a machine in February it came. It was probably the coldest day. They <laughs> dropped it off on a Friday, and it had summer fuel in it. It froze right up, and I started it up on a Saturday morning. I called the guy up, and he called him on the phone. I said, you know, that D8 froze up this morning. He said, Earl, it's about 30 below in the wind chill <laughs> right now. I said, well... There's diesel tractor trailers driving down Route 9. They don't seem to be having any trouble. <laughs> this is running right on the same thing. They came out and they Switched did it. it. And, I, and I ran that, well, I don't know, weekends and everything because right. it was by the month or something when we rented it. So that's great. It was, it was, that's a beautiful field, too. Yeah. yeah. That, oh, yeah. That's a nice Yeah, nice It really field. came out well. That was a somebody's green. Um, who was the, uh, owned the greenhouses down there? Not, not, um, I don't know. That was part of them. Uh, I forget it? who worked there. And told me it's somebody older than me in town, but I don't know that's that where, where that the housing Goldricks? development was. No, it wasn't. It wasn't there. It wasn't Valencia or uh, uh, McGuffick's or um, well, somebody else. Yeah, I don't know. I was just always in the impression that that was state land, but well, we met the fellow at a hearing. He was from Framingham that owned the wetland behind there, the other land, there was a little bit of high land and he abutted it and he had got it from his grandfather who owned the greenhouses. There used to be greenhouses down well, there. Well, the heroes owned some of that land in behind there too. Right. Yeah, they did. That was off of my fa father's and went up, okay. but it didn't sort of abut the, the Hadley. Yeah, yeah. It was over in the Haskell field there. Right. There was a, uh, George Hero owned it. Yeah. It was a woodlot right. up and back. Right. And he left it to Jack and right. Jack yeah. gave it to the land trust. Right. Well, I go back to the field up by the old high school and I can remember we'd haul dirt in to put around home plate when the rain came. Mr. Whittles, I don't know where he went, but he'd go and get these pails of dirt and we'd spread it around home plate because it would be so wet. Yeah, be puddles. And yeah. 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 We don't have too many puddles anymore. Earl's done a pretty good job. Yeah. He, he stays after those fields, so it's not like, you know, when, when your son played or when I played or when your, your husband coached when we'd have to get there early and sweep out yep. the puddles and fill them in. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't happen very often anymore. You yeah. know, there's a liability today. You know, you've got to, it's got to be safe. And the demand, people expect it to be, it's got to be safe. You know, you can't have a kid running out in the ball field and stepping in a chuck hole or something like that. You just. That's right. It, things are different today. You know, but aesthetically, the, there's also a, a great appeal to them. They, they look nice. Oh, they're absolutely. neat. They're well maintained. They look great. Frank, tell us tell a little bit about the, we talk about the fields, but there are things that go on on the fields. What kinds of programs has REC got? Well, it, contrary to probably what a lot of people think, the, the Little League baseball program and softball program in town, 
the soccer program in town, the lacrosse program in town, the football program in town. Uh, all of those really are run independently as they were sort of, you know, when your husband Hal coached and when I played years ago. And uh, they are all independently run. They're not run through the recreation department. They call themselves the Westboro Little League and the Westboro Youth Soccer Association. But the reality is they're run through individual private groups of uh, Westboro residents who, who run those as a president, et cetera, uh, on down the line. So all spring, I mean, we've got soccer, we've got lacrosse, we've got softball, we've got uh, baseball, um, soccer going on, we've got adult sports that are going on. Uh, and then the fall, you've got a different set. You've got field hockey, football, and soccer going on. Um, now we run programs, we run like a flag football program. We run summer camps on the programs all summer at uh, a lot of the different fields. So recreation programs certainly do use a lot of those. Uh, but the vast majority of the use really is, you know, from those, you know. But you have to coordinate that, don't you? Uh, absolutely. I mean, and that's what we you say get the in Henry this big Kitchen's meeting. Award for getting as far as knowing everything, uh, you know, everybody said, well, who plays here? And I, I just go, it's, it's, we do have, uh, you know, permits, but the reality is, is I, I know more about it than I, I have to look up uh, yeah. because we've done it for so long, Earl, and I've done it so, for so long as far as making sure that everybody gets a, a fair piece of the pie, if you would, make sure mm. they're all getting enough yeah. sufficient fields, knowing the times that they're on the fields, knowing the times that they're on uh, on weekends, knowing when the fields are available for anybody who would like to come in and, and just bring a small group in or bring some, some kids in that just independently want to go down and use a field for a family outing or just go down and just pitch and catch with their, their child. So uh, we kind of have to know exactly what, what's going on there. So there is a lot of coordination that, that does go on with that. Uh, there's a lot of coordination to know with the people who are maintaining the fields. So we do have a crew that comes in and, and mows the fields and they have to be aware of when yeah. we've got groups on the field, when there's going to be kids on the field, when they can't be there with their equipment. So. Now, you it take is. care of all the school fields as well? No. 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 At one time, I did. Can you believe that Les actually put his money in my budget? <laughs> Till he realized what he did. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> but he did. When we first started that and the schools came on, I had his money, too, all in my, in my budget, DPW. And then he realized it. Hmm. Uh, I think he liked the fact that Earl was doing the work, but then he saw the money and, yeah. wait a minute. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. But... Uh, no, the same. We we w I I usually go out to bid in uh, November, so that way a contractor will know if he gets it, he can be all hit the ground running in the spring. He can buy his equipment or whatever he needs to do, because it, it's it's a big task. There's but you a you task it out, don't you? I mean, you determine what he's going to do. At the, on the fields, don't you at the high school? No. Oh, you don't. Not anymore. No. Okay. All Brian right. Schlegel takes care of Brian that. Okay. He's in charge of building and grounds. Right. When he came, I was still doing it. And uh, Les had me doing it when Brian came on board. He okay. gradually took it all over. And I, you know, if, if he needs any help, I'll gladly help him. But the same contract that does. Yeah, I'm just curious what they're going to do with that upper field at the high school that we made such know. a mess out of. But, I, know it. I know. It's a beautiful it. spot. But yeah, I know. It's, it's a, a great spot, spot, you know. That would be the place for an artificial field. And that's, that's, that's right. the that way both of us feel that that, that would be a, irrigation a, a fantastic problem place. Absolutely. Put it in. take there. care of that. But again, we're talking a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another fundraiser, you know, yeah. to take care of something. Are you like talking that. about the Jimmy Hayes field? Jimmy Hayes field, yes. yes. correct. Yes, yes. Yeah. that yeah. that would be nice. An artificial field up there would be perfect. Yeah. Then it could be a multi-use field. And it could be lit, without yeah. disturbing anybody. And that's yeah. a beautiful place. I don't know if you've been yeah. up there just no. to to look over the town of Westboro. Oh no, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a fantastic spot. Uh, Any, you know, anything off that hill up there is a great. I spent picture. a lot of time up there trying yeah. to get them to compact it right. Yeah. And I didn't win, but. <laughs> You, you guys try it awful hard, though. Yeah, I know it, everybody. Such we, a beautiful spot, and to mess it up the way they yeah. did was just what a, such a shame. But. I know it. I'm now, you have the beach to take care of, too, this time of the yes. year, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, we, that's where we've been sort of working on the last week and a half, yeah. uh, getting the beach ready you know, for the summer at Lake Chauncey. Lake Chauncey's obviously been around for, for a long time, uh, and we will be opening the beach officially. Obviously, people have been you know, using it uh, prior to, but officially we'll be opening up the beach this Saturday with lifeguards. Great. And uh, Earl does, again, does a fabulous job maintaining that. Uh, I remember 
back in the 60s when I used to lifeguard there, it certainly didn't look back then like it looks now. I mean, it's Get nice and level, maintained, yeah. uh, you know, pretty much every day or at least three or four times a yeah. week. They're down grooming the beach, making sure getting all the weeds up or yeah. any of the sticks or rocks or anything that might have come in with the prevailing wind. Uh, cleaned it up and, uh, you know, we've got the pavilion down there right. now. So the, the beach really aesthetically looks a lot does, different, a lot great. better than it, it certainly did when than we were younger. Yeah. But it's a, it is a great town-wide facility. And Do you have any idea how many children are involved in all of the programs that you do, Frank? Yeah, I mean, if we were to put a number together, I think Karen came up with uh, just in the summer alone, we have 2,500. Yeah. Uh, who just participated in the summer programs. Uh, probably closer to 3,000 this year, you know, the way things are going. And overall, it's probably around 5,000 during the year. I mean, in basketball, I just use the example of basket basketball alone is uh, our major winter activity. We certainly do have a lot of other activities going on, but we had last year 810 kids playing basketball, and those are kids who not playing on the school mm -hmm. teams. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, that's independent. So trying to find gyms for 800 kids is, gets, right. a little, uh, gets a little tough, too. But, it, again, it's a great program. We do it right up through from second grade right up through high school. So it's a, it's a terrific program. And that, again, just using a number, there's 800-plus yeah. kids right there in one program. And I'd like to mention the fact that you don't work on the clock. If someone calls in and can't ref a game or do something, you step in. Well, my wife said I need the exercise. So, <laughs> uh, no, I, I enjoy that is one of the highlights for me um, of this job is it is a little different than it used to be when I first started. I was much more hands on and active in the programs. And now administratively, there's just so much to do. That's sort of taken over a lot of what I get to do. So for me, Whenever I get the opportunity to, to do something like that, particularly referee, I, I just absolutely love that. I mean, it's, it's just a great way for me to, to, to be out there with the kids and me to be out there with the parents as well and find out what people are thinking about the programs and, and things like that. That's, I get a great feel for people you know, when I'm out there. It's different than sitting behind the desk and talking to people. You're right out there talking with him on a weekend or a Friday night or something. Well, I go back with Frank to when he was in Little League, and he'd come to our house early waiting for Hal. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hal always said that you were one of the co most coachable kids he ever had. Oh, well, thank, thank you, know? you for saying that. I'm sure something that had, that had a lot to do with my parents. <laughs> oh, um, <yeah. laughs> telling me how I should act and how I shouldn't <laughs> act. Uh, but again, uh, it, I, I remember hell well, and there were certain coaches, uh, not that I didn't respect all my coaches, but there were certain coaches that you just loved listening to and being around, and certainly he was one of them. Uh, you know, we just didn't go up there. You love it any more than he did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what makes it Probably work. Yeah. not. I, exactly. And yeah. you know that as a, as a young person, that uh, you see coaches that are really smiling out there, having a good time, and teaching you things. Um, those are the guys, and that's what I try to get my coaches to do, to remember that the most important thing with this is 5% of these kids are going to get the chance to even play in high school. Yeah. Out of 5%, uh, that's it, uh, are even going to play in high school. That's it. So they've got to realize that this is really about fun and about the ability of kids to get some exercise and, and to go out there and have fun and be with their friends. And, and if they learn a little bit about basketball along the way or some other activity, then that's terrific too. Yeah. But, but Hal loved the game. We knew that as kids, you uh, could tell that. Sure did. But that's got to be a tough job getting folks who ref maturely. And what I mean by that is there are an awful lot of guys, I think, that we've experienced through the years who, who coach and they want their kids to win for them. They couldn't do it when they were kids, but they're going yeah. to win through their kids. And you get to get a win, kid, and that, that kind of gruff. Yes, sir. I think certainly probably early when I growing up probably had coaches like that. Yeah. And uh, I, I think out. the trademark, the problem, I think, with that is you, it's perpetuated because that's what you learned as a young person when you coached. If you played in high school, you played in college like I did. A lot of the coaches, that's, that's the way they that's were. Right. It was about winning. And you then, I, I was fortunate to coach 20 years in Westboro Little League and 14 years at Westboro High School. And... 
But I think what I learned, not only through my coaches, but through my job was really what was important all along. And uh, so for me, it was a pretty easy transition into being the guy who wasn't yelling and screaming at people, having a good time with people. I, I demanded respect out there, and I demanded they, they respected their opponents, right. uh, their, their teammates and everything. But I wanted them to have a good time in the field. And I, I think we've done a decent job, a good job, a really good job, actually, of making sure that happens in the programs right. that we oversee, that telling people what really is important uh, in these sports, but absolutely there are, are certain people out there, but, um, and I've had a couple over the years, and, and those guys I will sit down and I'll have a conversation with and, and just tell them, not in a, in a bad way, but just say, look, you know, this isn't the way we coach through the recreation department. Yeah. This, this isn't what the kids are all about. If you need to go to another level of, of coaching, then by all means, you certainly have the knowledge of the game, but you got to understand kids too, and more importantly, you got to understand kids right. if you're going to coach in recreation. And and I got to be very honest with you, we've we've done, uh, or oh, we've seen so many great coaches come out of our system who yes, yes. who understand. Even at the high school level, we have a high school program with 160 boys playing in it, which is kind of a role model for the state. And I would tell you, my coaches are just wonderful with those high school kids. Great. And the high, high school kids treat each other with a lot of respect in the program. Um, and to me, that's really good when a coach can really take high school kids and still make it fun for them uh, and not get out there and try to be the guy who's, uh, you know, the Bobby Knight guy. Right. Um, <laughs> Throw that chair. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we, <laughs> we, we don't have those people. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's good. Now, you've done a great, a great deal for the town, both of you. And together you've done even greater things. Are, th are there things now that the town can do to help you? Do you need volunteers? Do you need anything that we, we could help solicit for you today? I'm going to let Earl answer this one. I've huh. been talking so much. Uh, I, I, well, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if there's... <laughs> I, um, you know, everybody's good about... Uh, um, I can't think of anything okay. that I could. Ask, I, I think really just ask. getting the word out to, to everybody. I, I know, uh, particularly when we have situations where the fields are wet or the fields are, uh, you know, people are looking at fields and saying, "Gee, why isn't this field being used?" We have a plan. We really do have a plan. As Earl said, mm -hmm. there are times when the fields aren't being used, and people go, "Well, gee, well, we absolutely. don't see anybody in the field." Well. We work it into the schedule. There's got to be downtime on these fields. Or no matter how great a right. job he does or how much maintenance money or money you put into those things, they get overused, and uh, particularly in bad weather when people want to get on them early in the year. And uh, I, I think there are a lot of people who get a little disgruntled that they'll go to other communities. They're on their fields a little earlier than we are. Um, or they're playing games on days that we're telling them, sorry, you can't be on our fields yeah. today. Uh, we try to explain why we're doing that, uh, but certainly we'd like to get the word out to everybody about that. There, there is a method to uh, what we're doing, and, and it's for the protection of your children, really. We want them to have good fields and good safe fields to play on. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can do that is really by maintaining them the way we do and by sort of coordinating the way we do. And occasionally that means telling people, sorry, they're, they're too wet to be used. And unfortunately, like you know, Bob, a lot of our fields are right on the floodplain. Yeah. So right. they don't dry out as quick as they do. You know, the the new, um, um, I'll say, Greg's field, which was the Upton Ball field until Saturday, um, that's one that dries right out because it's way up in the air. Right. You know, got good drainage and stuff. But uh, you go down to Rogers, and there's white caps out and out and see the swamp <laughs> out there, and you know, I mean, you say, why isn't the field? I mean, it's just soaked. Yeah. You know. Haskell is wet too, you yeah. know, and uh, so you know the and uh, Hennessy Field is right on the flood plain. That's right. You know that's that's right there. You know, that's right. you got Jack Straw running right right behind it, and <laughs> sometimes it's, through you it. know right through it. You know, there's nothing you can do. It's yeah, just right. uh, it's just the property we had to use, and we made the best of, of what we have. But uh, it's uh, I'll I'll say that uh, our conservation agent Derek Sari has helped us a lot as far as. Uh, he does a fabulous job yes, as far as letting us get in the DPW and get in to these uh, drainage easements that are way in the woods. I know I'm getting a little bit off the path, but it all boils back That's to right. 
drainage on, on our athletic fields, you know, and getting the brush cut back and stuff like that. I mean, it just grows up the sediment from trees and limbs down and stuff like that. And he's been able to let our fellows get in, DPW get in there and clean it out and done it. Made a big deal. I mean, two, was it two years ago? Rogers, two of Rogers yeah, two, baseball two diamonds was shut yeah. down for the season. Mm -hmm. We got all that because the the, the drains that go under CSX under the railroad were plugged up. Plugged up, yeah. You know, and yeah. we've got two of them partly working, and there's two more that are plugged solid, and they're in the process now of uh, going through the uh, permitting to uh, CSX is willing to bore new ones and put new ones in to the tune of like four hundred fifty thousand dollars to do it. Yeah. But that will that all that drainage on Flanders Road. Got to get over to see the swamp to get to the Sudbury River to right. go down, right. and that's the only place he's got to go. You know, he's got to go through that uh, railroad. I'm pleased to hear you say, speak of Derek. He's he's done an awful lot to make oh, life a goodness. lot easier for us, sticking to the rules, but at the yep. same time helping you find ways to work it. Brilliant, brilliant fellow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is. You know, he's got a master's in conservation, and he's got four other degrees. He's just a. He does a great job. He really does. He's yeah. been a, uh, been a great. Great for the town of Westboro and great for the DPW and anybody that gets to work with him. He's a, he's a real likable fella. He's not a problem maker. He's a problem solver. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you've got a problem, he'll help you solve it. He'll work with you. Have you had problems with vandalism at all? Uh, I think we both speak to that a little bit. I think we are more, I, I talk to a lot of recreation directors throughout the course of the year, but in particularly during the summer. And... Uh, I listen to some of the problems that they have on some of their fields and some of their facilities, and uh, it's very different than ours. And I uh, certainly we have our little minor graffiti here and there, but I would tell you it's it's uh, it doesn't happen all that often. We've been pretty fortunate in Westboro. I mean, we do the best we can to make sure we protect all of our fields with with fencing and that type of thing. Uh, but for the most part, I, I think that the kids in Westboro have, uh, oh, yeah. and I hate to say the kids, but the reality is that's probably where okay. it's coming from. Yeah, it's usually not an um, adult that's down yeah. there. But, you know. but we've been very fortunate. Yeah. Very fortunate. But I have a pet theory that the neater you keep a spot, the less it gets abused. When it looks like trash, it'll be trash. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I yeah. totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. And I think that uh, can be said about our fields, our Absolutely. basketball courts, our tennis courts. Uh, we've kept them in great shape, and I, I agree with you that I think people look at that and say, yeah. you know. Right. One thing I did when I came here was, I mean, I owned Tidy Town for years, and I introduced the town in, the, in New England to the carting system. Right. And uh, uh, I brought them, I, I suggested when, when I got here, get rid of them 55-gallon drums that the guys are breaking their back, takes two guys to pick them up, and uh, you know, the water, there's no liner in them, the water's coming out of them, and you know, it's, it's, it, guy can hurt his back, you know, so we put the carts in, and then I went to a company called Butler Deard, and, um, and uh, I can't think of the town, they're up on the other side of Clinton. Anyways, uh, brought a cart up there, John Cove and myself brought a 64 gallon cart up there, and they designed a bag for us that slipped in it, slipped Great. inside of it. Uh, liner bag, and then I took two bungee cords and tie it around it like this. So I, Jim Harvey was good enough to sell the town a bunch at cost. I went down and saw him, and he sold us a bunch at cost because he's a distributor for their company. And uh, we put them out and took away all the 55-gallon drums. So animals can't get in them. The bees aren't in them. Uh, it's Water so much cleaner, and people will use them, yeah, you know. Right. And we have put them everywhere. We've locked and chained them, and it's made so much such a difference as far as the trash and the cleanup Great. goes, you know. Great. And it's easy for a guy. We've got a, a, a DPW fellow that goes out and does trash three days a week because he has to do the library and the police station, the fire station. And and we looked into other avenues of farming it out. It, it, it would be too. Because yeah, we've got expensive. too many yeah. trash containers remote at ball fields and stuff yeah. like that. But it uh, made a big difference as far as, I mean, you still got people that, throw their McDonald bag out in a yeah. corner and stuff like that, you know, and, and if you had 40 trash barrels beside the guy, you'd still throw it out yeah. the ground, you know. So yeah. you can't but I think you're right. I think that makes a heck of a difference. Oh. Keep it looking good and oh, big, big people difference. respect it. I'd like to touch on the back to work, the senior program, yeah, how much it. that helps me. Uh, I'm one, I have, I'm a one-man department, so 
every other little project that I bring on, I bring it on myself, you know. So, um, which is fine. I, 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 like I said, I love the job and I like, I love the challenge. But for the past five years, I'd say five years, I think that program's gone four or five, which has been a great program for me. I've had uh, Bob Wood, who's worked for me for the last four or five years, and he's a um, heavy equipment operator, mm -hmm. still got all his license. He's 83 years old. Uh, he'll go down and groom the beach tomorrow morning. He called me yesterday. He's going to go down maybe 6.30, 7 o'clock. He's got keys to the shop, and he'll go down and get the tractor and, uh, and you know, check the oil and, you know, make sure it's greased and everything, and he'll go down and groom the beach and everything. And, Great. and that's all back on the back to work for seniors. So Super. that frees me up to go and load up the machine that grooms the ball fields that I will go. I got 10 ball fields that I'll groom tomorrow morning. Mm. I do it for the weekend. So... That, that's a big help. And I have another fellow, um, Dick Langhorn. He's done all my painting. He's taken all our buildings in the last two years and painted them and done the trim and, and just made them pristine. Last year, he got so caught up, he did all the signposts and all the signs and all wow, the fields are green. I mean, it's just, like, like you said, it, 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 makes, it makes a difference, you know? And, and I like things being neat and organized and... Uh, you know, it's town property, you know, and it's, uh, we stay right a after it. If a board's rotted or something, one year we'll put putty in it, a trim board, and the next year it comes off, and uh, Ted Brady helps us out a lot. He'll, he'll come and, and work for us, uh, for, for Frank or I, and, and uh, replace a board here, and they will have him evaluate it. What do you think, Ted? Yep, we'll do this, and when Great. we, you know, just instead of letting it, you know, uh, an ongoing maintenance pro program saves so much money. Right. It just say, because big things don't happen if you fix a little thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. it just makes a big difference. You yeah. know, that's great. I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I love that. That's that. been a great, great program. Yeah. I've been fortunate, and I, I uh, applaud everybody that's been involved in that. I, I think it's a great program. That's, great. that's yeah. why I'm up at the DPW. I know is that, that senior program. I'm even learning to how to use a computer. <laughs> <laughs> they said you have to, and I said no, I don't. You're going to be dangerous yes, I do. before long. <laughs> But it's a wonderful program. Oh, and I, people say, oh, I wouldn't work for minimum wage. Well, saves you about $1,000 on your yeah. taxes. It's well, better than sitting doing home doing nothing. Else, you know, I, I feel bad for the people that would love to do it, just can't get out to get, do yes. it. You know yeah. what I mean? There's so many that r really could use it yeah. and, and can't get out to do right. it. You know, yeah. and that's, that's a sad thing. You know? right. No, it's a wonderful program that the town put in. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Well, I'm sure we've only just scratched the surface here in the discussion with you guys, but the real reason I said in the beginning that, that I really wanted to do this with you is to, to celebrate the fact that we can have separate agencies tasked with different chores, but they can find ways to work together and in the process save the community an awful lot of money, but at the same time build tremendous spirit and pride and produce a product that's just outstanding. And you guys have done that, both in terms of the program and in terms of the physical fields that they get to play on. You, do, you do deserve a lot of credit. Well, and I thank you very thank much you. for Thanks. taking the time. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to bring up or raise before we close this off? I mean, this doesn't mean it could end. I'd like to have you guys back at some point and review it again. I think I'm good. You're well, good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, again, I want to thank you for getting the word out for us. I mean, this certainly is helpful for us, too. I'm sure not everybody knows, you know, some of the things that we've done. I, I don't think you always go out whenever you save the town money. It's not the first thing we do is go run to the selectmen and say, look yeah, at the money yeah. we saved you. Um, but I think it's important for the taxpayer of Westboro to know Absolutely. that we are doing everything that we possibly can together. S saving money. You know, I mean, if we can do it more cost effective or whatever, I mean, yeah. whether it's the fertilization program, I mean, I was able to get hooked up down in Quincy. Uh, down Primaries, there with yeah. organic fertilizer, you know, and it's free to the municipalities, but you got to go find it. You got to go get it. You Cemeteries know? need to find it then. And 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 you 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 go down there and uh, you know they'll they'll set you up. We go down with a trailer and put 18 ton on it, all palletized and everything, and Great. and bring it back. I mean, it's still a job to put it down, but you'd have to pay somebody to put it down, yeah. and then you'd have to buy the product. And fer fertilization is one of the things that has skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the price of a bag of fertilizer in the last five years has gone, it, it really has gone right off the rick. It went up like almost 50, 
52 percent, so the guys tell me, it did drop back down to like like a 25 percent increase. But that, that's a lot of money when you're, you know, you're talking thousands of dollars, you know. It's, and without fertilization on the fields, then they'll, they'll just go, they'll go south, they'll get, you know, weak and they won't be able to take the pounding. Right. I mean, the kids, soccer and those big team sports really do a, a job on the fields. And we, we, on spring soccer to fall soccer, they can't use the same field. What I'm saying, we rotate the goal mouth. Mm -hmm. So they never play in the same goal mouth. So that goal mouth, that's what gets the wear. So when fall comes, they're not playing in the spring goal mouth. That's, that's been reseeded if it needed to or uh, been taken care of, and, and that's got time to grow till next spring. You know, and, and it's worked out good for right. us. So we don't have a, you know, a bare spot on the field. Then, you know, then, you, then it's just, <laughs> it just grows. Well, as I thank Polly for being with us and Earl and for Frank, I'd like to just add one editorial comment, and that is they talk about the, the money that they make as a salary, and that's important to them. But I've always felt that the most important the most important gift we can give to anybody is to tell them how what a great job they're doing and so I encourage the citizens of this town to speak out to Earl and Frank and let them know you appreciate what they're doing. Well, thank so you thank both. You very thank much. you, thank thank you, you very us. much. Thank thanks for coming much. in. Nice to see you both again too.